Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're gonna be talking about prototypes of a function. Now, this is an essential ingredient to understanding constructors, so you need to pay attention. It can be a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna try and make it real simple. Now, before we get started, please check out our sponsor. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. All right, so here we have some code from previous videos. We're going to reference back to that in the future, but for now, we're not gonna use that. We're actually gonna go outside of these curly braces so I can just collapse this. What we're going to do is we're just going to create a function and if you're wondering why we're doing this outside of the curly braces is because I want to explore it inside of this console over here. So we're just going to create a function. All we're going to do is just literally nothing. We're just going to return. I don't even know why I put that, but that's what we're going to do. <laughs> now, what I want to show you guys over here is when you say do something, that'll give you the function. But what you can do is you can look at the prototype by going to do something dot prototype. What this prototype is, is an object indicated by the curly braces, and it has a property called constructor. And this constructor is a function, which is in fact the function we created. So we have this weird loop going on, and I want you to really pay attention to this because it's confusing. Basically, we create this do something function. This has a prototype, which is what it inherits from, which is an object. And this object has a constructor property, which is what brought it into existence. And this constructor points back to the function. So if you want to see this loop, first thing we do is we look at the function prototype, which in fact is an object which has a property constructor. So when you expand this, you can see that here. This constructor property contains that function. So when we expand it, this is everything about the function. One of the things is this prototype property, <laughs> which brings us back to where we started. So here we have the constructor property, which is the function and so forth. You can keep going forever just by expanding these and expanding these and expanding these for eternity. So this is weird, and why is this even important? Well, it's important when we're trying to understand how calling a function as a constructor works when it comes to inheritance. When we call a function as a constructor, the prototype of this function is transferred to the new object as its prototype. So what we're gonna do is we're going to clear this console out, get rid of these comments here, and just to show you guys, we're going to call this function as a constructor. So we'll just say test, and we'll say new do something. You can ignore the return in this situation, it's not going to be used because we're using the new keyword. Do a refresh here, and when we say test, we have this object. It's an empty object. But if we expand it, we have this prototype. Now this prototype is the same prototype as the prototype of this function. So expanding it, look at this. It's that same object that has that constructor property. Comparing this to do something dot prototype, you can see, look at this, same exact thing. If you want to see this programmatically, you can do something like this. If do something dot prototype is equal to object dot get prototype of and pass in test. And then inside of this conditional, we can just say console log match. When we do a refresh here, we get match. Now, if you want, you can look up the difference between these two ways of doing things, but basically do something is going to have that prototype property, whereas test is not, so we have to do it a little bit differently. So let's go through an example of how this applies to us when we're working with constructors. Let's go back from the beginning and say, we create a taco constructor to make lots of tacos. And in here, we're gonna say this toppings and set that equal to, uh, let's do an array. And we'll start with cheese. And this is going to be on every single taco. Now, when we do something like taco.prototype.make and set this equal to a function, we're setting this uh, function onto the prototype of the taco function. So just for fun, we'll just console log making a taco. <laughs> And then we'll create an instance of this by saying something like let my taco equals new taco. All right, so what exactly is happening here? Well, if we refresh over here and we take a look at taco, the function, and then say dot prototype, this is gonna have two properties, make, which is the function we created, and then constructor, which points back to the original function. When we explore my taco, 
expanding this, we can see we have this underscore underscore proto. This is where we can see the prototype object. And you can see it's the same exact thing as up here. So the way constructors work is they transfer the prototype of the function to each of the objects that are created. So this here is the prototype of the function. We create an instance using this function and that's transferred down here to the instance. Each object created from this constructor is going to share that single object. So when we go down here and we create a new taco, these are both going to have the same prototype object. This saves memory, which is why we often attach the functions to the prototype. So conclusion, it's basically a really long video to explain what you probably already understood, but hopefully this video just gives you a little bit more details about how functions have prototypes and those are transferred to any instances created when we call that function as a constructor, such as here. So yeah, a little complicated, but if you want that extra information, there you go. Now in the next video, we're gonna be talking about something that's probably gonna come up a lot and it's very useful, so you'll want to check it out. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video, and be sure to subscribe.